Welcome back to my new home HVAC installation video. This is part six. I think this is going to be the last part. I'm kind of playing it by ear still. Uh, this is the episode where I make all the final connections. All the grunt work has already been pretty much completed. Like I said, I left all the fat in it just because I know some of my subscribers, they, they're apprentice installers and they like to see all the little details. And also for um, customers that might be thinking about hiring me, I wanted them to see what was involved in doing this type of work. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please make sure and watch the entire video. That would really help me out a lot. Thank you. So when I'm putting the, the storm collar, I always like to put a little bit of this roof cement uh, on that seam uh, between the flashing and the vent pipe itself. And normally I would use a brush, but I forgot uh, to take it with me. And I said, oh, what the heck? I have these gloves. Let me try and see if I can do an, a clean job with my finger. <laughs> Actually, I think it would have looked better if I would have done it uh, with a brush. But you still couldn't see it from the street, uh, so it wasn't that critical. But I think it would have gone a lot smoother if I, if I used a brush. And I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but this stuff tastes delicious. It actually tastes like, like black licorice. Yum. Just kidding. Don't eat that stuff. So around here they want us to uh, paint these uh, vent pipes when we come out through the roof just to make them blend in with the roof or the architecture of the home or the look of the home, whatever it may be. So earlier I mentioned to the customer that uh, the water, from, the rainwater was leaking through these vents and so I said that I would help her by sealing these and I know I didn't charge her to do this. So I'm just showing you that I did do it even uh, even though like she would never know if I didn't do it. So I put it on video. <laughs> but my father always told me a man that does not keep his word, what good is he? You got to keep your word. If you tell a customer you're going to do something, do it. So there is my beautiful vent pipe. It doesn't stick out too far, it's just right. So there is our gas line. Now I gotta put the reducer so that and a short nipple so I can connect the valve. And so now I'm connecting the pigtail, aka plug. And there you see the switch that turns on the, the light for the attic. And now I'm doing the part that I enjoy the most, which is connecting the low voltage, the pigtail, the gas flex. It's like the easiest part and it feels like the most productive for whatever reason. Probably because I know that I'm close to the finish line. So this is the part that I hate the most, programming the thermostat. Is it just me? Let me know in the comments because I take no pleasure out of programming a thermostat. And you would think that because it's easy that I wouldn't mind, but it just annoys me to have to do this. So now I'm connecting my whip to my disconnect and then it goes to my condenser. Uh, see this part, I don't mind. This part doesn't bother me. I think because it's more hands-on kind of stuff, it's not programming a thermostat. I'm also putting that low voltage wiring in a liquid tight connector because I've had so many calls where I had to go back and replace fuses for furnaces because the dogs will chew on the wires for whatever reason they, they think it's a chew toy the thermostat wires so you gotta put them in a conduit otherwise they're gonna get chewed up by your dogs and just a quick tip I use these one hole uh, C clamps rigid because they're strong really rigid <laughs> just like the word implies and uh, they don't move as easily so I, I use these and uh, you, all you have to do is tweak them a little bit so that they can fit nice and snug on your conduit so now I'm getting to my favorite part of the job this is it where I start connecting my gauges because I'm gonna do the startup for the AC this is where the customer starts to feel like oh finally this guy is gonna get out of my house I'm connecting the discharge line clamp right there for my field piece um, job links 
If you're gonna get a new set of uh, of gauges and they're gonna be uh, digital, this is what you want. I mean, I'm sure there's other good ones, reliable ones, but this is the ones that I've been using. I've been using field piece since I started in this trade in 1999, and. So far, Field Peace has never let me down. They, you know, and they're really good when it comes to warranty. So I would say, you know, and they're not even paying me for this. I should contact them, um, give me a discount code or something. But uh, so far, they never let me down. Uh, right now, I'm opening up the app. I'm gonna use Measure Quick. I'm not gonna use Field Peace's app, definitely for sure. Measure Quick is also not paying me, so I'm using Measure Quick and. Uh, they're by far the best for diagnosing for just for doing a simple startup um, they're the best when it comes to, uh, to yeah I'm not gonna use field piece for, for this their app it, it, it works fine but this gives you way more information and way more diagnostic tools so now I'm done charging the system and as usual measure quick did not disappoint the customer is going to have a pretty much what I would consider to be a perfectly charged system. So and just a word of advice for my customers, if a HVAC technician goes to your house and he doesn't have what I'm holding there in my right hand, which is that blue box right there, that's a scale, it can be different colors, it doesn't have to be blue, but if he doesn't have a scale, he doesn't put his tank on top of a, of a scale when he's adding refrigerant to your system, then how does he know how much refrigerant he added to your system? So make sure that they have that scale because if they're saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna add some refrigerant to your system," well, then you gotta make sure that they're that they're weighing it in. So you're gonna ask them, um, "You're gonna weigh it in?" Okay. If they give you a puzzled look, then I would be worried. Cause yeah, you can uh, charge a system just by looking at the pressures, but if they're gonna bill you for the amount of ounces or pounds that they're gonna put in there, well, then they need a scale. By the way. So now I'm gonna install the new wire mesh because I ripped out the old one in order to be able to run the line set uh, pipes through through that hole because um, it was old and brittle and needed to be replaced anyway. So for this I'm using my old uh, tin snips. Um, don't ever use new tin snips to do this kind of work because you'll just ruin them. And so a quick story about that. I lend these snips to somebody they were brand new I didn't notice what they wanted to use them for apparently they the person that borrowed them wanted to cut some wires with my tin snips uh, did it gave them back to me and then I noticed that they were damaged uh, the next time that I went to go cut some sheet metal so now they're my designated wire mesh cutting snips now another thing that's required by the city to pass inspection are these straps. We have to strap down the condenser to the condenser pad. Getting the, getting the line set cover ready. This is gonna be the bottom part. The bottom cap. So now I'm working on the top part of the line set cover and typically what I do if there's like a complicated cut that I have to do like in this case it was a little bit not not very hard but it was a little complicated a little tricky um, I always have a little piece left over of the line set cover so that's what I'm using here I'm using the little extra piece to do sort of like a, a practice cut <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm I'm using this piece. Uh, once I get this piece right, then I will use it as a template to to trace it on top of the actual piece that's gonna be there uh, permanently installed. So the inspector was here a minute ago, and he reminded me to put those locks. <laughs> I keep forgetting to put those locks in the condenser. But the, he finalized the permit. Here's my Hearst paperwork uh, proving that it passed the Hearst test, and um, here's the inspection record where he finalized the permit and I'm gonna give you a quick look around at the final product so there's our secondary and there's our primary drain on there I put a new screen I can get you closer
video, it was a lot of hard work, especially underneath that house. Glad it's over though. Everything works great. I already tested everything. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one.